Nebuchadnezzar was a great king. He was a great king because God made him great. God made him great and strong so that he could use him to punish the Jews. The nation of Israel had already been taken by the Assyrians over a hundred years before. But Judah sinned worse than Israel. And God raised up Nebuchadnezzar to punish them by taking them into captivity for 70 years. Nebuchadnezzar was a great king, except that he thought he'd made himself great by the deeds he'd done. He didn't realize that he was only great because God had allowed him to become so. Only through God had he acquired the ability to become great. Nebuchadnezzar was so full of himself, full of pride, that he had a gigantic golden statue of himself made at any time that the people heard certain music, they had to prostrate themselves and worship it. In order to teach him a lesson in humility and to show him just who it is who is in control, God took away his kingdom and he had to live outside with the animals in the fields for seven years until he learned to praise God and to recognize that God is the one who raises men up and puts them down as he wills. Let's go to Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. And in verse 20. And he said, What comes out of a man? That defiles a man. These are the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here Christ tells us that pride is an evil thing that defiles us. So what is pride? We're not talking about a pride of lions here. The meaning of pride from a biblical sense is to believe in yourself and your accomplishments without acknowledgement that God is the one who gives you everything, that without him we can do nothing. Go to James chapter 1. James chapter 1. And in verse 17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Here are a couple of famous quotes about pride. You can remember the boxer Muhammad Ali. He said, I am the greatest. Not only do I knock him out, I pick the round. And Fred Allen said, the last time I saw him, he was walking down Lover's Lane, holding his own hand. <laughs> it's not wrong to take pride in your work. People who do are generally people who endeavour to do the best job they can do. To be proud of something you have completed or achieved is healthy. But to go further and use it to make others feel inferior, they or less able to do what you can, is totally the wrong sort of pride. Pride can get in the way of a relationship, a marriage. It's pride that causes one to always want to have the last word. When there is a difference of opinion. When you fight to win, you both actually lose in the wrong run. Just remember you're both on the same side and pride has no place in your relationship. Naaman was the commander of the army of the king of Syria. And he was a great and honourable man in the eyes of his master. He was a mighty man of valour, but he was also a leper. Now Naaman heard there was a prophet in Israel who could cure him of his leprosy. So he travelled to Samaria where Elisha the prophet lived. Elisha didn't go to meet him, but sent his servant to pass on the message that he should wash himself in the Jordan River seven times and he would be healed. Naaman was insulted that Elisha had not come out to see him. He'd expected a great show of Elisha calling on God to heal this great man, not just telling him to wash in the muddy Jordan. He had much better rivers than this in his own country. He was furious and was about to go back home when one of his servants spoke to him and convinced him that he should swallow his pride and do what the prophet told him. So he did, and when he had humbled and washed himself, he was healed. In the book of Esther, we read the story of one of the king's nobles, whose name was Haman. Haman was so full of himself that he expected everyone to bow down to him whenever he went past. Esther's uncle, Mordecai, a Jew, was faithful to God and refused to bow to Naaman. 
And this made Haman so angry that he swore to get rid not only of Mordecai, but all the Jews in the land. You can read the story of Esther for yourself to get the details, and it's a good story. But justice won in the end, and Haman died on the gallows that he'd built to hang Mordecai on. How do you react when someone criticizes you? If your initial reaction is one of resentment and indignation, then pride is at work in your heart. Why do we get angry when someone criticizes us? Our pride is hurt. The fact that the accusations may not even be well-founded does not really matter. Your reaction is what matters. If the action is unfounded, don't worry about it. God will vindicate you. Ask the Lord to show you the sin in your heart. Pray for meekness and humility of mind and of heart. It is so precious to Christ. Remember, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. If you take pride in your appearance, it's a good thing, as this means you will look after your body and be considerate about the way you dress. But don't go overboard, because this can easily turn to vanity. There is a difference between self-esteem, which is a healthy thing, and pride, which is a sense of superiority over others. We need to have a positive self-image, not because there's something in us that makes us superior to others, but because we're human beings and are noble because God made us in his own image. Beyond this, we need to find a sense of self-worth in the message of the gospel and the value God has placed on us in being willing to send his son to intercede on our behalf, even to the point of laying down his life and suffering the most painful and shameful death imaginable to pay our debt of sin and to secure for us a place in his kingdom. You know the value of something by the price paid for it. God paid the highest price in the shed blood of his beloved son. Let's go to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. And we're going to read verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. This establishes us with a great sense of self-worth. But at Passover, when we share the bread and the wine, we declare that the price paid to redeem us was also the price paid to redeem our brothers and sisters in the faith. So we realize that we're all equal and none of us has any reason to feel superior to any other. So any reason for pride has vanished. We are all of equal value to God and therefore we must love all the brethren as we love ourselves. Let's go to Proverbs verse 16. Proverbs verse 16 and verse 18 says, Therefore let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. Did you realize that pride is the sin that turned Lucifer into Satan? Pride is the sin that caused Israel to reject God's ways and to worship the gods of the surrounding people. Pride is the sin that caused the priests to reject Jesus and crucify him. Why is pride so sinful? Pride is giving ourselves the credit for something that God has accomplished. Pride is taking the glory that belongs to God alone and keeping it for ourselves. Pride is essentially self-worship. Anything we accomplish in this world would not have been possible if it were not for God enabling and sustaining us. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7 says, what do you have that you did not receive? Now if you did indeed receive it, why do you boast as if you had not received it? This is why we give God the glory. He alone deserves it. On a number of occasions I have heard various brethren in the church say, Why me? Why did God choose me to take part in this work when there are people out there who are so much better than I? who would be better suited to the type of work involved. 
This shows the spirit of humility which is alive in the church. It shows teachability. It seems to be something which most of us have in common. I believe that humility is one of the main reasons we have been chosen, so that when the time comes and we are leaders in the kingdom, that we will teach and lead with compassion. Let us pray to become a humble people, for this is one of the marks of all his children.